Now, I don't care how right they appear to you when they make their statements, how outstanding a citizen that they may appear to be to you. God denying people are corrupt. One reason God denying people are corrupt because they determine once they uh, accept the position that there is no God, they determine what is right in their own mind. So if they want to commit incest, if they want to commit murder, if they want to steal, if they want to kill, they are the only basis for whether or not it is right to do it. And they determine a lot of time based on the situation. He said they are corrupt. Now, if I believe God, if you believe God, then we must believe that God is correct when he says that those people that say that there is no God are corrupt. Then he goes on to say, he speaks about their corruption. They have done abominable works. What kind of life do they live? Well, the Lord said they have done abom abominable works. Even if it stops at the point, which I doubt, because human sin, if it, even if it stops at the point of denying God, <clears throat> or if challenging God, or try to persuade others that there is no God, and saying irreverent things about God, that God is right when he says they have done abominable works. And not only that, he makes it even plainer by saying there is none that doeth good. Now you can rest assured, friend, by whatever standard God means, that if a person says that there is no God, none of them doeth good. Now, friends, that's what God is saying here. And God, who is able to search the minds and the heart, who knows what is what, because he created what is what. This is what he has said. Now, I'd like for you to turn with me to the New Testament. And we want to look at this class of people uh, and what the Word of God says about them uh, in the New Testament. And certainly it's not going to uh, disagree with what God has said in, in the Old Testament. Uh, you know, atheists not being a very astute in the Bible because they don't believe in God, then spiritual things are, are spiritually dis, uh, discerned, are hidden from them because God, uh, the devil, their God, has blinded their minds uh, to the extent that they really don't understand. And so their reasoning is based on the minds of men that God does not exist, things evolve, and other type of foolish things that come out of their mouth. And uh, they think they're intelligent. I, I don't want to know about their credentials. I don't have to know whether they uh, matriculated, in, matriculated in college or whether they have a degree or not. They're, if they're a degree, then the Bible still is consistent of what it says about them. And certainly they're not wise enough to tell me what happened millions of years ago. Uh, most of them don't know what happened, say, um, uh, 15 years ago. And there are a lot of things that happened uh, 10 minutes ago that they don't know. But God knows everything, and he certainly knows them. In Romans 1, uh, 
uh, beginning at verse 17, uh, and I want to uh, make this uh, applicable to our study today, and certainly it includes them, okay, because of the word that we have studied earlier. The Bible said, uh, beginning at verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Okay. An atheist is an ungodly person. Uh, he has no need for God, and therefore he becomes ungodly. The Bible says that the wrath of God rests upon and has been revealed from heaven, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. In other words, God is speaking uh, from heaven concerning these people, concerning the wrath that they are under. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who troll the truth in unrighteousness. Now, specifically, we get into our relationship in this lesson to atheism, beginning in verse 19. The Bible says in Romans 1, 19, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Okay. Now, the Bible says very plainly that the things that has been, that may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it unto them. Now this passage very plainly says that God has made himself known to mankind. He has made himself known uh, through his creation. Uh, he has made himself known through uh, the very fact that we are here, that we are intelligent beings. So God has, has given us evidence that there is a being that is a creator, that there is a being that is very powerful, that supersedes uh, by in measures that are unmeasurable, the knowledge and power and wisdom of man. And any man that can look at another man or look in the mirror and say that there is no God, friends, I'm just, don't you think that that's a fool? Notice what he says that God is manifested in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Every time they look into a mirror, every time they look around and see the birds and the bees and the trees and the sky and the moon and the stars and uh, uh, feel the breeze, the air that they breathe, the water that they drink, the most obvious thing, that there is a very powerful, powerful, intelligent being that put this into place. And God, his creation, is crying out to the atheists, thy fool, thy fool, thy fool. Open your eyes and see God is real. It says here in verse 20, <clears throat> For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, 